where I have to determine the zeros of two linear functions. A zero of a function is an input, or in this case, an x value, that makes the function output or function value equal to zero. So if f of c equals zero, then c is a zero of the function. It's also true that graphically, if the point c comma zero is an x-intercept or horizontal intercept, then c is a real zero of the function. Looking at our first example, we have g of x equals negative 10 minus 5x, and now to find the zero of the function g of x, we set g of x equal to zero and solve for x. By solving this equation, we'll determine the input or x value that makes the function value equal to zero. So the first step to solve this linear equation is to isolate the variable term by adding or subtracting. So let's undo this negative 10 by adding 10 to both sides of the equation. So on the left side we have zero plus 10, which is 10, equals negative 10 plus 10 is zero, so we have 10 equals negative 5x. The second step is to multiply or divide in order to solve for x, because negative 5x means negative 5 times x. To undo this multiplication, we divide both sides by negative 5. So on the left side we have 10 divided by negative 5, which is negative 2, equals, on the right side, Dividing by negative five undoes multiplying by negative five, so this simplifies to just x. Or negative five divided by negative five is one, one times x is x, so now we know our zero is x equals negative two. The input value or x value of negative two makes the output or function value equal to zero. Before we look at the second example, let's verify this graphically by looking at the graph of g of x. Notice how the function g of x crosses and intersects the horizontal axis or x-axis at this point here where the x value is negative two. This is the point negative two comma zero, which tells us when the input or x value is negative two, the output or function value is zero. Now let's look at our second example. Given the function f of x equals 56. Notice how here we have plus and then a negative fraction, let's just write this as minus eight-thirds x. Now to find the zero or zeros, we set f of x equal to zero and solve for x. So we have zero equals 56 minus eight-thirds x. First step is to add or subtract to isolate the variable term. This time, because we have a zero on the left side, instead of subtracting 56 on both sides, let's go ahead and add eight-thirds x to both sides. Simplifying, we have eight-thirds x equals 56, and a negative eight-thirds x plus eight-thirds x is zero. Our last step is to multiply or divide to solve for x. Because eight-thirds x means eight-thirds times x, we might be thinking that we should divide both sides by eight-thirds, which would be correct, but instead of dividing both sides by eight-thirds, Let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal of eight-thirds, which is three-eighths. So we'll multiply the left side by three-eighths and the right side by three-eighths. So on the left side we have three-eighths times eight-thirds, which is one, and one times x is x. Equals on the right side, to find this product, let's write 56 as a fraction with a denominator of one. And now before multiplying, we'll simplify eight and 56 share a common factor of eight. There's one eight and eight, and seven eights and 56. Notice how the product is now just three times seven, which equals 21. So the zero of f of x is x equals 21. If we look at the graph of the function f of x, notice how it does intersect across the horizontal or x-axis at x equals 21. The x-intercept, or horizontal intercept, is the point 21 comma zero, which again tells us when the input or x value is 21, the output or function value is zero. So this graph also verifies our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.